Please stand and join me in welcoming Champlain Student A Cappella Group, Purposeful Dissonance, who will lead us in the singing of the national anthem. Please be seated. Please welcome Dr. Lori Quinn, Provost and Senior Vice President for Academics. Here now, in the presence of candidates for academic recognition, members of the faculty and administration, alumni, trustees, honored guests, and friends of Champlain College. The 141st commencement is hereby convened. Just a few short years ago, I had the honor of wel welcoming you, the class of 2019, to our academic community at our opening convocation ceremony. Our community now gathers again today in our academic regalia, which is a sign of respect for the accomplishments of those who wear it on important days. And graduates, today it demonstrates our respect for you and the accomplishments you have achieved at Champlain. In another of our traditions, I want to point out the cords and stoles that many graduates are wearing today. They represent academic achievements and honor societies. They represent, they honor veterans or those currently serving in our US military. They show graduates ethnic and cultural pride, their student leadership roles, and their experiences as first generation college graduates. You can find more information in your program on these forms of recognition. Graduates. All of us who have been part of your journey at Champlain, including your professors, your deans, the associate provosts, librarians, student affairs leaders, and many others who have supported your learning, have found great fulfillment in seeing your growth and success. I am honored to join them in celebrating you here today.
please welcome Scott Carpenter, Chair of the Champlain College Board of Trustees. Good morning. Hey, class of 2019, are you ready for this? Hey, parents and family and friends of class of 2019, are you ready for this? Somebody's more ready. <laughs> On behalf of the Champlain College Board of Trustees, it is my pleasure to welcome each of you to the 141st commencement of Champlain College. Honored to share this momentous day with you, the class of 2019. You're going to hear that a lot today. And I extend a special welcome to your families and friends who supported you on your journey. I know how meaningful this day is and how proud we all feel. You are graduating from an amazing institution, but I think you know that. Your time has provided you a range of skills, personal and professional, that will serve you throughout your career and your life. Your radically pragmatic education leaves you ready to participate, ready to perform, ready to prosper, and ready to pursue your purpose in life, whatever that is. All of us gathered here take great pride in watching you, members of the class of 2019, graduate and join the ranks of the Champlain alum. The bonds you have formed with faculty, friends, mentors combined with your innovation and optimism will last a lifetime. And remember, use, leverage, and support that Champlain network that you work so hard to develop. I'm confident you will face the challenges and opportunities in the spirit of Champlain's motto, let us dare, dare to embrace your roles as leaders and strive to make our world a better place through your words and your actions. So on behalf of the Board of Trustees, I extend to you a heartfelt congratulations, best wishes for a healthy and prosperous future. Congratulations. Please welcome Peter Jewett from the class of 2007 to present the alumni welcome. Hello, Champlain graduating class. I'm Peter Jewett. I'm a lifelong entrepreneur and a 2000 Champlain graduate. I came to Champlain College with an online classified site I was sure was going to be the next Craigslist. I studied e-business management. I took full advantage of Champlain's focus on experiential learning and willingness to let me integrate my business into my studies. Along with a couple of Champlain buddies who still happen to work with me today, we pivoted the classified site into an eBay drop-off store and ran a half million dollar a year business while we were earning our degrees. I learned a ton in my classes, but mostly I learned by doing implementing ideas in real time at the shop. These day-to-day -day experiments were pretty evenly split between successes and failures, but the experience of running a business while I was in school that I could apply to my college classes and vice versa was invaluable and gave me a unique and rich educational experience. When I started missing classes because I was spending so much time at the shop, I approached then Champlain President David Finney and explained the situation. Together and with other fellow Champlain entrepreneurs, we founded the BYO Biz program. Even though we shut down the eBay store a few months after graduation, I'm really proud to see the BYO Biz program still moving along with other fellow student entrepreneurs hustling at their businesses. Currently, I run a company in downtown Burlington in Portland, Maine called Bytes.co. We have a staff of 20 local employees that provide digital marketing, website design, and hosting and support services to businesses throughout New England. We mostly help with digital efforts, but our work bleeds into all facets of a company. I've seen the inner workings of hundreds of businesses around this region. I want to give you a few tips today, things I've learned since I received my diploma. I know most of you are probably going to leave here and get jobs, but I want to challenge you to think like entrepreneurs. 
Entrepreneurship is a mindset. The populations of Vermont, Maine, and New Hampshire are the oldest in the country. This also applies to the workforce and the business owners. Don't let people give you flack for being millennials or Gen Zers. Your fresh perspectives, energy, and technical skills are exactly what the businesses in this region need. Don't be afraid to learn the hard way. Fake it before you make it. I'm not suggesting you take your accounting degree and go open a veterinary practice and start doing open heart surgery on cats. But I'm saying when you see a problem at your company and you're 70% confident that you know the solution, take that risk. I'm telling you right now, the majority of the workforce is spending their days just trying to figure stuff out and get home at 5 p.m. Just make sure you don't mess everything up. Think like an entrepreneur, not an entry-level employee. Don't just be a yes man. Try to think like a business owner or customer and figure out why you're doing what you're doing and how you can do it better. Present your superiors and peers with your rationale, your improved processes or products, and ways to measure success. You might have to do this a few times before they listen, but be persistent and they'll crack eventually. I'll end with a cliche. It's not what you know, it's who you know. Today you're joining the ranks of thousands of Champlain alumni all over the world. Look us up on LinkedIn or have the alumni office help you track us down. Clean up your social media profiles and then drop us a line. Invite us out to grab coffee or beer. We're all working forward towards our personal and mutual goals. Let's do it together. So on behalf of myself and the Champlain alumni community, enjoy your day. This is no small accomplishment. Congratulations on successfully navigating through Champlain, earning your degrees, and making it here today in one piece. Things are about to get real. Take it seriously, but have fun. Hope to see you around town. Please welcome Nancy Champagne, representing the class of 2019. <laughs> President Lachman, members of the Board of Trustees, distinguished guests, members of the cabinet, faculty, staff, friends and family of the graduating class, and my fellow classmates. It is an honor to speak with you here today. And on behalf of the class of 2019, thank you all for being here, and thank you for all of your support these last four years. Class of 2019, on this day, as we begin to look toward the future, I am reminded of the past. I am reminded of the shy, terrified 18-year-old who came to this campus four years ago with no friends or family in the area, no plan for the future, and very little confidence that I would figure it all out. I am reminded of the girl who did everything she could to blend in and avoid being the center of attention. The girl who was afraid to talk to her first year roommates, to even make eye contact with others, and who spent way longer than I'd care to admit asking myself the same question. Can I do this? During that time of uncertainty, when my fear of failure made me want to quit before I had even started, I thought about my very first role model and what she would do if she were in my situation, my mom. My mom has been a critical care and trauma nurse for over 30 years. The worst days of many people's lives, days where their loved ones or themselves were in critical condition, was often just another Tuesday for my mom. She has seen and been through more than I could imagine, but you'd never guess it by looking at her. My mom taught me that everything can change in an instant. To appreciate the good days, get perspective from the bad, and take advantage of every opportunity. She taught me that there are enough things in this world that will stop you or try to break you, and that you shouldn't be one of them. It was this train of thought that inspired me to change the question I kept asking myself from can I do this to do I want this? And if the answer was yes, then I wouldn't hesitate or doubt myself. I'd just go for it. I'd love to tell you when my turning point was at Champlain, to share that one decision I made, that one person who helped me, or that one experience during my time here that changed everything. 
I'd love to tell you that it was quick and painless, that I just woke up one morning, all of my self-doubt and fear were gone, and everything had just worked itself out. But it hadn't. It wasn't just one story or moment that got me or any of us here. It was thousands. It was multiple people who helped and tested us. Experiences that were good and bad. Successes and failures. Lessons learned, lessons missed, triumphs and mistakes. For me, it was the close-knit community, the amazing opportunities, and my passion for my major that got me out of my shell. And the more I tried new things and took advantage of the opportunities around me, the more I loved it. And the unique thing about Champlain is that it sneaks up on you. You don't realize how valuable the opportunities and experiences and people are until you look back on who you were before them and how different all of these moments would be if they happened somewhere else. Fast forward four years later. I have attended four professional conferences, had three internships. I worked as a peer coach, a champ guide, a digital forensics tutor, a teaching assistant. I spent a semester abroad in Dublin, Ireland, and I worked as a senior admissions intern, where I told prospective and admitted students alike about my wonderful time here and everything that I have done. I have gone after everything that I have wanted, taken advantage of every opportunity, and I've achieved success I never thought possible. I have also failed, been rejected, stumbled, cried, and had days where I didn't know how I was going to pick myself back up again or where I was going to go from here. I encourage you, my fellow students, on those days where the can I do this overpowers the do I want this, to really consider if the regret you'd have over trying and failing would outweigh the regret of not trying at all. Consider our school motto and what it truly means. Adayamas, let us dare. Let us dare to do what scares us, to turn our dreams into goals that we just haven't accomplished yet. Let us dare to appreciate the good days and put the bad ones in perspective. Let us dare to embrace failure on the path to success. Let us dare to bring others up instead of tearing them down. Let us dare to be kind in a world where it is easier to hate. Let us dare to recognize our own privilege as individuals, as US citizens, as college graduates, and what we have that others do not. Let us dare to change the can I do this to do I want this and not let fear overpower us. As we embark on this new journey together, I leave you with the wise words of another one of my first role models my older sister, Katie. I called her after my first week of classes on the verge of tears and told her that I didn't think I was smart enough to be here. Katie's response has stuck with me every day since and is one of the reasons I am standing up here today. She told me, it's not about how smart you are, it's about how hard you work. You don't always have to be the smartest person in the room or the most qualified, you just have to be in the room to be the one willing to put in the extra hours, to work, to let your drive overpower the can I do this voice in your head. I'm not going to lie to you, it is going to be hard. And as sure as I am that every single person here can and will succeed, I am also sure that at one point or another, we will all fail. Let us dare to meet that failure with acceptance and gratitude and work past it toward our goals to achieve the things we want and never fear if we can do it. Because I'm going to let you in on a secret. You can do it. There will be challenges and hardships along the way. You will be tested, strained, and sometimes that voice will come back and ask, can I do this? To the things that threaten to break you and the obstacles that threaten to get in your way, I have one thing to say. I dare you. Thank you. Please welcome our president, Donald J. Lockman, the eighth president of Champlain College. Good morning. 
Welcome to our Board of Trustees, members of the college leadership team, faculty, staff, distinguished guests, and friends of the Champlain College community. We gather today to honor the members of the Champlain College class of 2019. Congratulations. I would first like to address our distinguished faculty. You continue to impress me with your expertise, your dedication, and your commitment to our mission of educating students to be skilled practitioners, effective professionals, and engaged global citizens. You have helped guide our graduates on their journey of transforming their lives and finding their passion. You have encouraged these graduates to think more deeply critically and creatively. Class of 2019 and guests, please join me in honoring Champlain's outstanding faculty. I would also like to acknowledge the families, partners, and friends who supported these graduating seniors. We understand the sacrifices you have made we appreciate the role you have played in helping these graduates get to this day. Congratulations to you, and thank you for your support. <laughs> Class of 2019, today we celebrate you. We honor your hard work, the course assignments, the internships and campus jobs, the early mornings and all-nighters, the just-in-time deadlines met, and the just-past-the-deadlines. The sweat, and maybe even the tears. We honor your accomplishments during your time at Champlain. Your experiences at Champlain have laid the foundation for you to achieve professional and personal success. We know you are well-positioned for this. 100% of you completed a career and financial readiness program. You tackled mock interviews, coaching sessions, resume building, career fairs, elevator pitches, LinkedIn profiles, and portfolios. 90% of you have had at least one internship, and many of you have had three or more work experiences in your fields. Many of you completed your studies while juggling on-campus and off-campus jobs. You have attended, presented, and volunteered at industry conferences in accounting, marketing, public relations, game, entrepreneurism, digital media, blockchain, cybersecurity, education, and more. You have represented Champlain in industry competitions such as the Vermont CFA Challenge, Launch VT Collegiate, North, Northeastern Collegiate Cyber Defense Competition, and the Free Enterprise Marathon. You have won awards. Your work has been featured in forums and festivals, magazines and newspapers, on TV, and on websites. Some of you have launched successful businesses, created your own games, and developed apps. Many of you are already working in your field, making films, working at local companies, assisting with live forensics cases, and serving as student teachers, social workers, and criminal justice experts. In terms of professional success, you have already distinguished yourselves. And what about your personal success? You have distinguished yourselves here as well. You have built meaningful relationships with your peers, faculty, and staff, many of whom you now see as mentors and friends. You have created relationships around your shared interests, like esports, music, and games. You have made friends with your fellow peer coaches, student ambassadors, resident advisors, orientation leaders, student government representatives, diversity ambassadors, international roundtable participants, music and theater performers, and eco reps. And you have lifted your voices to improve our relationships with each other. As committed members of our college community, you have actively and responsibly engaged around complex issues. You have advocated for change, organized a student walkout and sit-in, and contributed to efforts to enhance inclusion in our community. You have also forged relationships within our Vermont community through your volunteer activities, 
through your internships with nonprofit organizations and political organizations, and through your involvement in addressing issues such as mental health, opioid addiction, climate change, and homelessness. You have developed relationships with people around the world through your experiences in locations like Dublin, Montreal, Shanghai, Zanzibar, Uganda, Italy, the Galapagos Islands, and the Gambia. You have accomplished so much in your time at Champlain College. Yet as I reflect on your time here, I have to ask, why? Why did we test you, push you to pursue internships, counsel you and mentor you? How do we make meaning of your Champlain years? Why did you do all of this? The easy answer is, you did this so that you could sit here today and receive a, the college degree for which you worked so hard. And yes, for the rest of your life, you can proudly say, I am a college graduate. But there is more meaning to be made of your years at Champlain. There was a method to our madness. A few years ago, Gallup and Purdue partnered to survey hundreds of thousands of college graduates to identify whether college made any difference in career and life success and satisfaction. What they found is that six student experiences made the difference in people's lives years after graduation. Graduates who identified with these experiences were statistically happier, more successful, and more satisfied in their lives. These six essential student experiences in college include having at least one professor who made them excited about learning, having professors who cared about them as a person, having a mentor who encouraged them to pursue their goals and dreams, working on a long-term project that took a semester or more to complete. Capstone, anyone? having a job or internship that allowed them to apply what they were learning in the classroom, and being extremely active in extracurricular activities and organizations. Graduates, as I read that list, most of you were saying to yourselves, I did that, I had that, I experienced that. You were saying that because these experiences are part of the distinctive Champlain experience. Our small classes, faculty advising model, academic program design, and career collaborative and insight models all contribute to experiences that will make a long-term difference in your life. Your Champlain education has been designed to enable you to live happier, more successful lives. We have worked hard to help you connect your professional focus with your meaning and purpose in life and you have worked hard to make the most of your time here. Your presence here today is evidence of that. As you reflect on what your Champlain education has meant to you personally, know that you have participated in an educational experience that has set the foundation for your future success and happiness. We are excited to see what you will accomplish. Champlain College Class of 2019 Thank you for spending the past few years of your life at Champlain. You have enriched our community and advanced our mission. You have already made a difference in our lives and in the life of our community. Your accomplishments to date give us the confidence that you are ready to tackle the challenges and opportunities that await you. You are ready to enter this next phase of your life. Take your radically pragmatic education Make a difference in this world and make us proud. Audeamus, let us dare. Thank you. Please welcome Assistant Professor Melanie Brown, who will present the honorary degree recipient, David France. David France, you have bettered the lives of countless individuals by generously sharing your musical talents, innovative educational approaches, and optimistic vision to create positive social change. 
By following your passion for the violin and the commitment to excellence required to play with the leading orchestras around the world and with some of today's legendary performers, you've demonstrated that anything is possible with focused determination. As the founder and executive director of Revolution of Hope, which includes the Roxbury Youth Orchestra, you've inspired today's learners who will become tomorrow's leaders. Through your best-selling book, Show Up, Unlocking the Power of Relational Networking, you've shared how you found your way out of adversity to unlock amazing opportunities by building intentional relationships and by always being generous, even with the most limited of resources. As one of the top 100 most influential people of color in Boston and a top 40 urban innovator under 40 in the United States, you have received well-deserved recognition for your groundbreaking and life-changing work. Champlain College honors the transformational learning opportunities you have created. You personify the concept of intentional giving, showing up, and being generous with your time, talents, and spirit. You are truly making a difference. David Franz, by virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of Champlain College, I am pleased to confer upon you the degree of Doctor of Humane Letters, honoris causa, on this 11th day of May, 2019. Congratulations and welcome to the Champlain College community. Champlain College, class of 2019, good morning. You don't sound excited. Champlain College, class of 2019, good morning. No, no, I want more. Champlain College, class of 2019, good morning. And congratulations. It is a humbling honor to be here this morning, especially when I think of all the unique and powerful stories that have led each of you to this, to this moment. Everyone here has a story that matters. And I would encourage you today to find a quiet place sometime this weekend to ponder that story and to trace the story of you that has brought you here and let that story ignite your future. My name is David France and I'm the founder and executive director of Revolution of Hope, an arts for social change organization in Boston. Um, recently an Amazon number one best-selling author. I'm a dreamer. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a violinist, a social entrepreneur. Can you hear me? Yeah. Awesome. So I'm a lot of things. I'm a traveler. My mother, who's here in the front row, she'd probably say that I'm a little bit crazy. Um, but I'm also a storyteller. And this morning, Thomas Jefferson's words couldn't resonate more with me. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain inalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. 
And, and my parents, they immigrated to this country from the West Indian island of Nevis, and never in their wildest dreams could they imagine that their last child, me, that I would find my way into the American dream through a free violin program. And so, and so this morning, I wanna take you on a journey through a few stories of my own journey into the American dream. And I hope that in some way, you can find yourself, your story, in my story. So it's, it's always hard to know where to begin to tell your story. So, so I'm gonna start in the 19th century. And so of course you're thinking, this is gonna be a long morning. <laughs> So in 19th century France, there was a little boy, seven years old, and his name was Antoine. And so Antoine was just a French seven-year-old. But one day, Antoine was kidnapped from his family for a ransom. And the kidnapper said, if you want your son back, you have to give us the ransom money. And his family said, of course. And so the family gave the kidnappers the ransom money. And the kidnappers, they took the ransom money and they didn't return Antoine to his family. Instead, they took him on a ship and sailed him to the Caribbean and literally dropped him off. And so while this little boy was wandering on the beach by himself, somebody saw him and said, well, what are you doing here? And he started speaking French. And that man who found him on the beach decided to raise him. And so when Antoine grew up, he got married and he had a son. And he thought, well, no one on the island can pronounce my last name anyway, so I'm gonna change my son's last name to the country I was kidnapped from, France. And then he said, I'm gonna name my son after the man who found me on the beach. And that man's name was David. And I'm the third David France. And I am, I am named after a stranger who gave his life away to a random white kid kidnapped wandering on the beach in the Caribbean. And, and my, my personal origin story reminds me how during amazing milestones like today, we often underestimate the power of ordinary people and how a normal person can be an unlikely vehicle for significant impact. So, so now, I, I, want you to, I want you to imagine a world. I, imagine a world without, without slums. Imagine a world without war. Imagine a world without injustice. Now, now, imagine that same world without Mother Teresa, without Gandhi, without Martin Luther King. You see, we all want a world without conflict and injustice, but at the same time, the best humans who've ever lived were revolutionaries who were responding to injustices and we couldn't imagine our world without them. Our imperfect world sets the stage for the heroes who have brought hope to our world and has, have also left incredible legacies that have inspired scores of unknown heroes throughout history and today. I, I wonder if Pangloss from Candide was right. Could the world we have now, our imperfect world, could it be the best of all possible worlds? There are four things that are true of each of the three heroes I mentioned. None of them shied away from articulating the problems with the world or their community, but they each saw that problem as an opportunity. Then they put themselves at the intersection of the problem and the solution, and they all inevitably wouldn't see their dream realized, but would hand over their legacies to future generations. I call that POIL, problem, opportunity, intersection, legacy. Class of 2019, repeat after me. Problem? problem. You know I need more energy. Problem? problem. Opportunity. opportunity. Intersection. intersection. Legacy. legacy. All great movements exist at the intersection of seemingly divergent ideas. As a lover of travel, I had the pleasure of one summer being lost in Brussels, and I came upon a violin shop, and I'm a violinist, so of course I, I, I went in to see what was happening inside this violin shop. And when I go in, I see a luthier, I see a violin maker, and he's making and he's fixing violins. But before I 
got to go to the maker of the violins to say hello, he moved to another counter and he started serving coffee. And as my eye panned from the violin making counter to the counter where he was serving coffee, I noticed that there were tables there and there were people there. And so I, I walk up to him and I curiously ask, Wha what is this? <laughs> and he said, it's a violin shop and a coffee shop. And he told me that he was a social guy and making violins was too lonely. So he built a coffee shop onto his violin making studio. And, and that moment changed my life. And, and the moral of the story isn't that you should all go and open violin themed coffee shops, <laughs> but it should free you to be yourselves. That violin maker in Brussels, he found a solution that was at the unique intersection of who he was and we can do the same in our own lives. And so after realizing that I, I could be the unique intersection of me, I wondered, okay, how can I travel my, how can I combine my love for travel and music? So after I graduated from the New England Conservatory of Music in Boston, I went on a musical tour of Poland with 50 musicians. And the tour ended in Berlin and I had this crazy idea. Rather than get on the plane with my 49 friends and fly back to the United States, I wanted to know if I could get from Berlin to London in three weeks with no money. <laughs> so on the day my friends boarded the plane in Berlin, I instead opened my violin case at the airport and started playing to see if I could play my way across Europe. And my journey began. And, and, and my friends, they started following my status updates on Facebook to see if I was still alive. And <laughs> eventually, after a while, three weeks, I made it to London. And while flying back to Boston, I realized I learned three life-changing lessons. You could travel with a lot less stuff than you think. You don't need a lot of stuff. You could travel with a lot less money than you think. You don't need a lot of money. And if you take a leap of faith, a great adventure could await. And so at that time, I learned these principles. I had no idea that they would be the building blocks to building an inner city youth orchestra. And so like I said, I'm the son of West Indian immigrants from the island of Nevis. My, my parents are here. Give my parents a hand, a round of applause. Stand up. They're on the front row. Um, so my mother, <laughs> thank you. Give your own parents a round of applause. Give a round of applause to your parents. Thank you. So my mother has 18 brothers and sisters, and my father has 19 brothers and sisters. And <laughs> And they came to the United States in search of the American dream. And so when we were growing up, my parents said, okay, you're in the United States. You can, you can be whatever you wanted. And all my siblings became track stars. And I thought, why run when you can eat? <laughs> <laughs> and so I was so shy um, that, that the kids in my school, they thought I was a mute. And so when I was seven years old, I was given a chance to learn the violin through a free violin program, and, and I, I needed a voice, and the violin became my voice. But when I started, my black friends, they said, playing the violin is for white people. And my white friends said, playing the violin is for white people. And my own teachers, <laughs> they, didn't, um, they didn't expect much of me because I was black. And so I found myself really fighting institutions, really trying to demand the education that was promised me. But in 2009, have you, have you guys ever heard of the website YouTube? Uh, YouTube okay. So in 2009, YouTube had their first ever international contest. They wanted to create the first orchestra auditioned on the internet. And so I thought, this is my chance to equalize the playing field. All I have to do is practice more than everyone else in the world. <laughs> and so I practiced and I auditioned. And a couple months later, I found out that I won. And my father rented a van and he filled it with as many of my aunts and uncles as could fit in the van. Not, not all 37. And, but, but I had a secret. I was going to be one of the concert masters of the orchestra. I was going to be the lead violinist. And so after one of the pieces in the concert, the lights go down. And when the lights came up, I was in the first chair. And that moment was a realization of my parents' American dream. They could come from a poor country, from 37 siblings, and me, their last child, born in the United States through a free violin program, could lead an international orchestra at Carnegie Hall. 
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. But, 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 but <laughs> that wasn't enough. And I started to think about what about those who didn't have access to the kind of training that I fought for? And I started to think about how, ca how, can, how can I democratize access to classical music? So shortly after winning the YouTube contest, I went back to Bermuda, where I was living at the time, and I saw videos from this movement out of Venezuela called El Sistema, which is a, an initiative founded by Dr. Jose Antonio Abreu that uses music to transform the lives of kids in some of Venezuela's poorest villages. It started 40 years ago with just 11 kids, and now over a half a million kids are playing in ensembles. And so in 2011, I won a fellowship to study El Sistema in Boston and in Venezuela. And during my last week in Venezuela, we were in a city called Coro, and I met a woman named Isandra Campos. So Isandra Campos, she's a mother of five, and a year before I met her, she moved out of her house with her kids and with her mother so that she could use her home as a, as a place where an orchestra could be formed, as a music program. Seven days a week, she has a music program in her house, a morning program for the kids to go to school in the afternoon, an afternoon program for the kids to go to school in the morning, and in the back of the house, she raises chickens. And so she took me to the back of the house one day, and she said, everyone that comes here has to pick the eggs. So here I am in the back of the house picking eggs. I had never done that before. <laughs> I thought it was on an Easter egg hunt. And she said, um, do you know what I do with these eggs? And I thought, well, there's a lot of kids here. Maybe you scramble them. <laughs> and, and, and she slapped me across the face. She said, no, I sell them. And she told me she sells the eggs for one bolivar each, and that's how she buys the music for the kids. And I realized there were no longer any excuses. And I started to wonder on behalf of what community would I move out of my house and sell chicken eggs. So I came back to Boston to launch Revolution of Hope. And I was on a, when I was in school, I was on a full scholarship. So when I graduated, they stopped sending me checks. <laughs> and I couldn't afford my rent. And so I was homeless. And there were many nights I slept behind the aquarium in downtown Boston. And people often ask, how did you start Revolution of Hope while you were homeless? And I say, well, I used POIO. Growing up in Connecticut, I saw a problem. I couldn't understand how a state with so many rich towns in the country, some of the richest towns in the country, could have a public education system that was so unequal. And this is true all over the United States. But I saw this as an incredible opportunity. I get the chance to create a world-class youth orchestra in the hood. So I put my interest in music at the intersection of educational disparities and a hopeful future for inner city youth. And the problem of not having any money actually created a bridge to previously isolated communities. So, so what did we need? We needed instruments. And so we went to Berklee College of Music. And, and I, I know what a, I'm a violinist. I know what a violin case looks like. I know what a cello case looks like. So we stood on the sidewalk of some of the music schools in Boston, and when anybody came out with an instrument case that looked like the ones we needed, we'd say, hey, if you play the cello and you go to Berkeley, you probably have another cello somewhere. Oh, you do? <laughs> Would you want to donate that cello on behalf of a kid in Roxbury? And a month later, we had 30 donated instruments. And so then we needed teachers, and so we engaged musicians who caught a vision for this intersection of music and social justice. And then we needed a space, so a principal at a school in Roxbury gave us the gym they weren't using after school. And we needed kids, so a bunch of curious teenagers have come on board this adventure of building an inner city youth orchestra. And we're an orchestra, so we needed performance venues. So we partnered with institutions that seemed out of reach for so many inner city youth. And we've had performances at Harvard and the Miss Massachusetts United States beauty pageant and Microsoft and the inauguration of the governor of Massachusetts. And the music, the music became a bridge connecting so many communities that previously had nothing to do with each other. And now they are not only coexisting, but they have become a part of each other's lives. So, so, so what's, our, what's our legacy? We've had a unique opportunity to build leadership capacity in our youth. Because we don't have enough teachers, we've trained the students to be teachers. And they're helping with administration. And the way in which we've responded to our needs have given the students more ownership of the program and turned them into leaders. So the other day, w one of my students, w one of the youngest and the shortest, he asked me, Mr. France, why do you make me serve the snacks to everyone every day? And I said, well, I'm training you to be the boss. 
don't you want to be the boss? And another student who overheard him, she said, okay, when you retire, which one of us is going to run the program? And first I thought, retire? How old do you think I am? <laughs> retire. <laughs> and I said, well, you all will as a team. And so, so many programs that start with all the money needed can bring in outsiders to run the program. But 20 years later, usually still need those outsiders to continue to keep things going. But our students see themselves as the future of this program. And so we now, six years later, we meet five days a week for three hours a day after school in the heart of inner city of Boston, Roxbury. And, and when I think of Thomas Jefferson's words, I realize for so many of these young people, music is their way into the American dream. Ordinary people can make a difference. And I hope this model can be useful to you. Remember Poyle. First, don't be shy. Don't shy away from identifying the problems in our world, but nurture an ability to look beyond the problems for the opportunities therein. Then put yourselves in what makes you unique at the intersection of the problem and the solution, and then bra blaze a trail that creates a sustainable legacy beyond your lives. When I think about that Brussels story, I know you have all the tools you need. You don't need a lot of stuff. You don't need a lot of money. And if you take a leap of faith, a great adventure may await you. None of history's heroes would exist in a perfect world. I'm going to say that again. None of history's heroes would exist in a perfect world. But I think this is the best of all possible worlds. And if you, Champlain College class of 2019, if you put yourselves at the intersection of some of life's biggest hurdles, what you come up with, your solutions, might not only be unique, they just might change the world. Thank you. Please welcome Provost Lori Quinn to present the candidates for degrees. President Lockman, as Provost and Senior Vice President for Academics, it is my honor to present to you the class of 2019 as candidates for Bachelor of Fine Arts, Bachelor of Arts, Bachelor of Science, Bachelor of Social Work, and Bachelor of Science in Business Administration degrees from Champlain College. From the Division of Communication and Creative Media, the 2019 candidates for Bachelor of Fine Arts and Bachelor of Science degrees, Dean Paula Viloke Merikanji joins President Lockman for the presentation of diplomas. Sterling Marlon Adams, summa cum laude. John Anthony Amigo. Demond Barkley.
Sarah Belfay, cum laude. Max Bernstein. Sarah Suzanne Brunkhorst, summa cum laude. Juliet Cavanaugh. Haley Robin Clemens, cum laude. Jordan Cohen. Chase Lee Cosper. Douglas Cool. Tyler Crisp. Austin Joseph Dickerson. Amanda Duane, magna cum laude. Jessica Farnsworth, summa cum laude. Ian Frelinger. Holly Danielle Gibbs, cum laude. Meredith Goodwin, cum laude. Shai Gordon. Thomas Hannon. Brielle Hansen, summa cum laude. Danielle Hazelton, cum laude. Evelyn Henderson. Joanna Hunts. Sarah E. Hubbard, summa cum laude. Nathan Ireland. Abdul Jackson. Kristen Jensen. Rose King. Megan Knights. Maddie Laflamme. Matthew Lasnicki. Catherine Lawrence. Joshua Levitt. Eric Lewison. Anthony Mahan, magna cum laude. Meg Matarazzo, summa cum laude. Daniel W. McCorkle. Timothy McCorty. Mullen Metcalf. Megan Milano, summa cum laude. Harold Moody. William Mensch. Matthew Neal. Matthew Nesteroff. Sophia Penna, cum laude. Daphne Lillian Plant, cum laude. Robin Nicole Reynolds. Matthew Roche, magna cum laude. 
Michael Schutz. Anna Steely. Sulang T, magna cum laude. Griffin Wagner, cum laude. William Hexamer Walker. Jack O. Whitney, cum laude. Aminta Williams. David Zimmerman. Monica Almadovar. Dylan Alter. Michael Andrews, cum laude. John Angelos. Michael Armstrong. Karina R. Bacek. William C. Beanland IV. Jocelyn Bedell, magna cum laude. Max Bell. Katrina Biruby. Griffin Brem, cum laude. Jody Briggs, summa cum laude. Christine Brumbaugh. C. Daniel Bush, summa cum laude. Jennifer Lynn Carlin, magna cum laude. Benjamin Parker Cortijo. Jason Cutuño. Maria Crawford. Carrie Cunningham, cum laude. Anya Del Bental, summa cum laude. Michelangelo Demo. Margaret Di Stefano, magna cum laude. Matthew Dismuk. Bria Douse. Alexis Dunn, cum laude. John Elliott. Rachel Elmi, summa cum laude. Jillian English, summa cum laude. Simon Estabrook, cum laude. Scout Fishman. George D. Foss. Kieran Kirby Fraser. Faith L. Frith, cum laude. Kayla Garrity. Amanda Bryant Gates, magna cum laude. James Gifford. Leonard Gingello. Nicole Glidden, magna cum laude. Sarah I. Gonia, magna cum laude. Dylan Gooley. <laughs> Hayden Graham. Joshua Greaves. 
Elizabeth Hammond. Charles Harper. Benjamin Heller. Megan Patsy Hoynes, summa cum laude, highest average in the division. Brennan Howell, magna cum laude. Evan Jansen. Calvin Johns. Quinn Canner, summa cum laude. Megan Kelting. Kayla Jean Kowalsny. Joshua A. Lanham. Harrison Linder. Kevin Liu. Olivia Catherine Lyons, summa cum laude. Nicholas Magnus, cum laude. Patrick James Marchese. Joseph Martellucci. Elena Masker, magna cum laude. Rachel Elizabeth Matthews, summa cum laude. Michael McKay. Sally Tate Meacham. Rianne Mercado. Jenna Mizra. Jesse Moyer, magna cum laude. Sean Napolitano. Holiday Newton, summa cum laude. Jonathan Nickerson. Amila Nuhojic, magna cum laude. Cameron O'Connor. Kylie O'Keefe. Jacob Olson. Ellen Oppenheim, summa cum laude. Graham Paneer. Dylan Michael Patterson. Elizabeth Peake, magna cum laude. Duncan Persons, cum laude. Riley Piscusa. Ryan Place, magna cum laude. Kirsten Potts, magna cum laude. Joseph Riley Price. Thomas Ray. Shannon Rip, magna cum laude. Kevin Thomas Roberts. Julia Rodriguez. Alex Sabatel, cum laude. Katie Schieser. Jessica Dorothy Schultz, summa cum laude. Samuel Scott. Mackenzie Shea. 
Benjamin A. Siegel, summa cum laude. Isaac N. Singer, cum laude. Thomas Sullivan, cum laude. Shana Teka, summa cum laude. Connor Tully. Jordan Upshaw, summa cum laude. Olivia Vitito, summa cum laude. Jonathan Vogt, cum laude. Joshua Walker, magna cum laude. Artemis C. B. Walsh. Mix Casey Shippa. Noah Waltzer. Charlotte Jeanette Williams, summa cum laude. Julia Rose Wallenwitz, cum laude. From the Division of Education and excuse me, um, from the Division of Education and Human Studies, the 2019 candidates for Bachelor of Arts, Bachelor of Science, and Bachelor of Social Work degrees. Dean Laurel Bongiorno joins President Lockman for the presentation of diplomas. Okay. Sean Burke. Robert V. Sedek. Julia Marie Acosta, cum laude. Josephine Gaines. Oliver Ash. Eric Avery, cum laude. Jenna Buzano. Kiana Best, magna cum laude. Chelsea Blunt, cum laude. Christian Bruno. Justin Bush. Zoe Karen, cum laude. Alex Carrier, summa cum laude. Laura Dane Cavazos, magna cum laude. Brandy Conley. Jake Corrigan. Kirsten Cotter. Paige Coyle, magna cum laude. Lindsay Day, magna cum laude. Brenna Debit, cum laude. Kayla DeBonville. Ashley Devereaux, summa cum laude. Madeline Duverve. Ava Eaton. Rebecca P. Estabrook. Allison Fishthal, magna cum laude. Amethyst Flores. Alyssa Fowler, summa cum laude, 
highest average in the division. Gabrielle H. Garfield. Elizabeth Gerald. Rachel Delaney Greenberg, magna cum laude. Gabriel Ingman, cum laude. Alyssa Jamison. Kara Johnson. Hannah Keenan, magna cum laude. Aurora Kelly. Carol Ann Kelly, summa cum laude. Erica Latier. Rachel Leduc. Taylor Sage Marshall, magna cum laude. Kelsey Mason, cum laude. Erica Miesde, magna cum laude. Michaela Mativier, cum laude. Blaj Mihailovich, cum laude. Samantha Lynn Mills, magna cum laude. Caitlin Morrison Gillis, magna cum laude. Molly Rice Mosley. Ashley O'Kane. Emily Olette, cum laude. Robert Pumpandria, cum laude. Jake Pactin. Jacob Plout, cum laude. Amelia Schreiner. Ashley Shea. Brianna Summer Tessie. Joseph Tibby, summa cum laude. Julian Townsend. Samantha Turner. Lauren Wintrub. Crystal Whitney. Billy Wintrode. Margaret Woodmund, cum laude. Helena Wright. Alice Young. Jamie Zellick, magna cum laude. Bethany Ann Asher. Amy Kahn. Catherine Manley, cum laude. Jessica Rose Rapp, cum laude. Alana Snare. From the Division of Information Technology and Sciences, the 2019 candidates for Bachelor of Science degrees. Dean Scott Stevens joins President Lockman for the presentation of diplomas. Erica Bryn Anderson. Sloan Anderson. 
Abigail Barr, summa cum laude. Jacob Beckerman, cum laude. Kai Blanchard. Justin J. Boncaldo, magna cum laude. Justin Booten, cum laude. Connor Breen. Aiden Breheny. Christopher Brennan. Brandon Brozek, summa cum laude. Zachary M. Burnham, magna cum laude. Eric Cacciavallani, cum laude. Evan Finbar Callahan, summa cum laude. Maximilian A. Capote, magna cum laude. Jonathan Castro. Nancy Champagne, summa cum laude. Caitlin Chapdelaine. Felissa Auden Charles. Adam Chiravallo, cum laude. Travis Signoli. Samuel Clark. Colin Karen, cum laude. Naomi Kaufman. Lydia Colesi. Timothy M. Craig. Timothy Scott Crane, cum laude. Julian Croy. David D'Amico. Robin Christian Didums. Alice Easter. John Eastman, magna cum laude. Sean Egger. Clayton Elwood. Andrew Emond. Joseph Ertel. Benjamin Estes. Nicholas Faria, cum laude. Adam Ferrante. Sean Fortin. Dylan Benjamin Francis. Derek Gagnon. Samuel J. Gallant. Jenna Garbett, cum laude. Christopher Gentile, cum laude. Eric Goben. Simone Gorski. Elliot Gray. Melody German. Aaron Hamilton. Lucas Hernandez. Amanda Nicole Johnson, summa cum laude. Stephen Johnson. 
Dalton Patrick Keating. Mr. Travis Kennedy, magna cum laude. Blake Larner Crapo, cum laude. Aaron Leonard, cum laude. Rachel Lewis. Brandon Ledyard. Jack Malvey. Rosser Martinez. Asher McCauley. Trevor Douglas McConnell. Thomas Ota McGillicuddy. Connor Mendel. Stephanie Merrill, magna cum laude. Nicholas Michelle. Brandon M. McNeeny, cum laude. Mutasi Mosley. Suleiman Olo. Amanda Peralta. Christian Perez Waldo, summa cum laude, highest average in the division. Calum Phillips. Angelica Plummer. Alexander J. N. Rader. Nicholas Robbins. Lakeisha Rock. Matthew Roy. Tristan Rule. Bryce Schieser. Morgan Seilsed. Adam Shackelford. Alex Simons. Corey Smith. Benjamin Sodergren, cum laude. Summer Softly. Niels Steinbugel. Warren A. Steins. Brandon Shish Brown, cum laude. Terry Tasky. Zachary M. Taylor. Gabe Troyan. Zachary Tyler. Michael Benziel. Ryan P. Weeks, magna cum laude. Michael Owen Wilkinson. Andrew Wong. Kevin Wadilla, magna cum laude. Jacob T. Wright. Dustin Yost, summa cum laude. Michael Zeiser. William Zeiser.
from the Robert P. Stiller School of Business, the 2019 candidates for Bachelor of Science and Bachelor of Science in Business Administration degrees. Dean Scott Baker joins President Lockman for the presentation of diplomas. Becca May Iroweli. Erin Beaudry, cum laude. Derek Blackwell Hunt. Wyatt Borchetta Platt, summa cum laude. Philo Brown Gould, cum laude. Zachary Burnham, summa cum laude. Cyrus Anderson Burris, summa cum laude. Jacob Burt, magna cum laude. Sean Cashman. Franklin Cummings. Alex Dalton. David Dalton, cum laude. Cody R. Douglas. Craig Feinstein. Zachary Michael Fisher. John Patrick Fitch. Michaela Foltz, magna cum laude. Amber Guerra. Matthew Giles. Zachariah Charles Godin. Lauren Guiney. Audrey Hemlep. Kelly Hillis, summa cum laude. Hannah Nicole Hook, summa cum laude. William Hughes. Timothy Raymond Hulbert. Joseph Andrew Johnston. Emma Katz, summa cum laude. Jared Michael Nepper, summa cum laude, highest average in the division. Melissa Knowlton, magna cum laude. Madison Kopeck, summa cum laude. Aaron Landry. <laughs> Qinghua Li. Austin London. <laughs> Catherine Joan Markert, cum laude. <laughs> Michael F. Masterson. Ian McKenna, summa cum laude. Sam McLaughlin. David Merritt, summa cum laude. Matthew Mignot. Nathan Miller. Lindsay Morley, summa cum laude. Amanda Nielsen, summa cum laude. Mitchell O'Neill. Nicholas J. O'Priest. Evan Dane Fippen, magna cum laude. 
Hattie Rosenberg, cum laude. Elijah Rubin, magna cum laude. Patricia Sanchez. Brandon Schlossberg. Logan W. Smith. Nathan Smith. Quentin Smith. Garrett Steele, cum laude. Morgan Streeter. Portland Alexander Tiles. Christopher Robert Bernali. Samuel Whitney. Matthew Wolf. Jonathan Woodside. Brian Michael Cashman, Jr. Stephanie Felix. Topher J. Chufo. Christopher Duplay. Hayes Gilman. Logan Hall Potvin. Avery Hansel, cum laude. Chico Borrero, Jeso. Sage King. Bim Luitel. Thomas Payne. Macy J. Seacard. Joaquim Trin. John Van Egas. Trevor U. White. Will the members of the class of 2019 please rise for the conferring of degrees. Members of the class of 2019, by virtue of the authority vested in me as president of Champlain College, by the Board of Trustees and the, the State of Vermont, along with the advice and consent of our faculty and certification by our provost. I hereby confer upon you the baccalaureate degrees which you have so justly earned with all of the accompanying rights and responsibilities. I welcome you into the ancient and honorable community of educated citizens and lifelong learners and welcome you warmly into the distinguished community of Champlain College alumni. You will enhance their legacy. To signify your new status as college graduates, you may now move the tassels on your caps from right to left. Congratulations. Please join us in singing the Champlain College alma mater, which can be found on page 16 of your program, led by Purposeful Dissonance to conclude our ceremony.
sweet, sweet, lingering refrain. We'll sing a song with spirit, brother, wave the green and white. Always onward, never slowing, goals for air in sight. Hold the name of Champlain sacred, praise it loud and strong. We will march to victory as we sing our golden song. Now our alma mater reigns the queen of destiny. We will pledge our lives to duty, never failing thee. Hark to the joyous chorus and the sweet refrain. Join in festive song together, sing of old Champlain. Please remain at your seats until the platform party, faculty, and graduates have recessed. We then invite you to follow the graduates and join us for refreshments. <laughs>